A single Mind Flayer tadpole can wreak absolute havoc if allowed to find itself a humanoid host, even more so if it can access a non-humanoid host. But have you ever considered what might happen if a Mind Flayer colony was able to get its tentacles on a living dragon? The result is something far greater than even an elder brain can control. Hello and welcome to Monster of the Week, the show where we dig up old creatures from the forgotten past of D&D and bring them to light for use in your current 5th edition game. My name is Dungeon Dad, also known as Josiah, and today we are going to be talking about a creature from D&D's past that of course comes to us from the pages of Dragon Magazine. Issue 337 to be precise, the one with the artwork of Zugtami on the cover that is I'm assuming an older version of what she was envisioned as because she does not look like that anymore. Not only is there an older depiction of the demonic fungal queen, but there's also an article in this issue of the magazine called Five New Menacing Mind Flaying Monsters. There's actually some pretty good stuff in this one, and if you're planning on running a campaign or adventure that uses mind flayers as a main centerpiece, I'd recommend checking it out because there are some cool monsters aside from the one we're going to talk about today in there. And among these new menacing monsters, there is something that I didn't realize until I saw it that I needed in my life. Now just for those of you who are not aware, Mind Flayers procreate through a process called Ceramorphosis, which basically entails them taking a creature called the Mind Flayer Tadpole, which is just a little itty bitty slug-like creature that is allowed to crawl inside of the skull of a humanoid creature and it eats their brain and replaces it, thus transforming them both in mind and body into a mind flayer. Typically this is done with a human or other humanoid creature, like an elf or an orc, but there are examples of this being done with non-humanoid creatures, such as the Mind Witness from Volo's Guide to Monsters is what happens when a beholder is taken over by one of these parasites. In today's creature, the Brain Stealer Dragon is the result of one of these Mind Flayer tadpoles making its way into the head of a dragon. The result is an abomination of incredible draconic and eldritch power. These horrid creatures marry the cruel genius of the Mind Flayers with the absolute power of the dragons, creating something new. A hybrid monster the likes of which modern D&D has never seen. Today I'm going to talk about just how these creatures do in fact flay mines in combat, and of course talk about some ways that you can actually use this creature in your 5th edition game. But for now, put on those tinfoil hats, because it is time for... Now like all dragons, the Brain Stealer dragon comes in a variety of age categories. And I've made a stat block for every single one of them, the Wormling Dragon, the Young Dragon, the Adult Dragon, and of course the Ancient Dragon. As per usual, all of those stat blocks can be found in the description below. What's great about this creature is that it can be used across all level ranges, like most of the dragons, so you've got the Wormling for your new upstart adventuring party and the Ancient Dragon for your level 20 demigods essentially. The one thing I do want to say going forward here is I'm not going to get super in-depth with their claw and tail attack abilities because that's essentially the same as other dragons of their size. Plus, you have the stat block right there so you can take a look at it, so I'm mostly going to be focusing on what makes this creature unique when compared with the other dragons in our combat section here. So just like other dragons, it of course has a fly speed and claws and all that good stuff. However, its physical, natural attacks is where the consistency kind of ends here. Lending from its Mind Flayer heritage, it of course has gnarly tentacle attacks that can grapple and potentially stun its targets if the target isn't able to pass an intelligence save. And of course, it wouldn't be an Illithid without some kind of brain extraction ability. So much like its much weaker Mind Flayer brethren, this creature is able to rip the skull open of any humanoid creatures it has grappled and devour their brain. Now, one of the biggest differences here between this and any other dragon is it doesn't actually have a breath weapon, it loses access to that. But instead of that, it gets a Mind Blast, which if you're familiar with the way Mind Flayers work, is a mental attack that goes out in a cone, similar to a breath weapon, and deals psychic damage and also has a chance to stun the target. As powerful psychic beings, the Brain Stealer Dragon gets one hell of a Mind Blast that causes increasing amounts of damage as the creature levels up. One thing that's worth noting here is Mind Blast, if you pass the Intelligence save, you don't take half damage, you take no damage. You're just completely fine. But 
the flip side of that is if you fail the save, you take the full damage and you also get stunned for an amount of time. So it's a much greater risk reward. Whereas with the regular Dragon's Breath Attack, if you pass your save, you're still taking half of that fire damage or poison damage, whatever it is. But if you fail it, you're only taking damage. You're not stunned, which can be extremely brutal, especially in a fight against a dragon where every round matters. Once this creature hits the adult phase in its life, it can of course cast some of those iconic Mind Flayer spells, such as Detect Thoughts, Levitate, and of course Dominate Monster. And of course, like every other dragon, when it gets to that adult age category as well, it gets access to some legendary actions. These allow it to do things like make a few extra attacks and read enemies' minds. Combat with a Brain Stealer Dragon, I imagine, is very similar to combat with lots of the other dragons, except it has an extra element of danger because this creature can grapple you much easier and, of course, eat your brain if you don't do anything about it. So let's take everything you hate about dragons and everything you hate about Mind Flayers and mash it all together and you are faced with this abomination. And God help you if you're in its lair. The place that a Brain Stealer Dragon chooses to live is going to be absolutely drenched in the psychic energy that is constantly bathing the place for miles because of this extremely powerful creature. Often its lair is going to be in underground labyrinths of tunnels that have access to ocean water, or in the Underdark, places that no one would normally go unless they're looking for trouble. And within its lair, it can try to disrupt the mental state of anyone who finds themselves unlucky enough to be in there as well. If you're a spellcaster trying to cast any kind of of spell with concentration, as a layer action, it can force you to make a concentration check or drop the spell. It also has the possibility of mixing up people's sensory input and stunning them with an effective brain lock. And it can even turn small patches of its cave into acidic ooze that will pull people in and possibly restrain them if they don't make the correct saving throws. And like any truly legendary creature, at your discretion of course, it has regional effects that impact the very land around the place it inhabits. Creatures that have an intelligence score of at least four, that are within five miles of the dragon's lair, find that they suddenly have the ability to communicate with each other telepathically as there's kind of an ease and loosening of psionic energy. Of course, the catch to this is the Brain Stealer Dragon gets to listen in on any of those telepathic conversations that happen within close proximity to its lair. So what might seem like a boon at first, is ultimately going to be a very dangerous proposition for a party that's communicating battle plans or anything else the dragon might have interest in. There's also a faint psychic hum that can only really be felt mentally that kind of exudes over this five mile radius as well. It's not something anyone would necessarily pick up on, but as you get closer to the dragon's lair, this hum gets louder and the psychic disruption becomes apparent to anyone who's mentally in tune with their own mind. You'll also find any cavern walls are unnaturally smooth and have odd tentacle-like patterns going through them. They're all covered with a thin layer of moisture. This is all just meant to build anticipation as the party approaches the dragon's lair and also build a sense of the alien nature of the mind that they are about to confront. And the Brain Stealer Dragon can be used for a whole array of schemes and plots and intricate master plans, which is one of the reasons why I love using intelligent, genius-level creatures in my games. While they can be difficult to roleplay, they're extremely fun because you get to hatch all these crazy schemes over months out of game. And speaking of plots, let's talk about some... Maybe you're running a game in the Underdark, and the players just find themselves in one of the Drow cities, or it could be anywhere really, but somewhere where people live. And everyone in town suddenly starts to hear this faint psychic hum, and maybe some people realize it's slower than others, but there's definitely something up. At first, no one really thinks too much of it, but as the months go on, people start disappearing and the citizens start to notice. While Mind Flayers may be the first thought that crosses the minds of many of these creatures, they truly have no idea what they're up against. And maybe it falls to the party to save this town of creatures from whatever it is out there lurking in the shadows. Or maybe on the surface somewhere in another city across the world, there is a malevolent red dragon that has long plagued the farmlands and the mountain range near this massive dwarven kingdom. So, like any good group of stalwart adventurers, the party takes up a quest to go and slay the dragon. However, when they get to the dragon's lair, it's empty. There's nothing there. There's signs that a dragon at one point did live here, but there's nothing here now. Even stranger still is they're able to find traces of mind flare activity both in the lair and in its surroundings. What started as a dragon slaying quest ultimately turns into a mind flare hunt as the party 
It continues looking and trying to figure out what exactly happened here. Ultimately, the party stumbles upon a Mind Flayer plot to subdue this red dragon and turn it into a brain stealer. That's bad for everyone involved. The people certainly had enough trouble as it was with this red dragon, let alone a brain stealer. And the dragon definitely doesn't want that. So, maybe the dragon is able to come to terms with the party. In exchange for its rescue, it stops terrorizing the local kingdoms. And what the party thought was once their enemy ends up actually being their greatest ally against the Mind Flayer menace that's rising up from the Underdark right beneath their very feet. Or perhaps in a different far-off land, there is a Brain Stealer Dragon that's already made its home in a dense network of tunnels on the surface, or even in the Underdark. If the party, or someone who's paying them to check it out, stumbles across giant skulls and remains around this entrance to the Brain Stealer Dragon's lair. The skulls in particular look like victims of a Mind Flayer attack. However, what could possibly do something like this to a cloud giant? The party investigates further, which ultimately leads into a dense network of tunnels populated by all kinds of mind flayers and terrible eldritch creatures culminating in a fight with the brain stealer dragon. Or perhaps the party is sought out and intruded by a paladin in shining armor who wants to recruit them on a noble quest to save a golden dragon wormling from a brain stealer that seeks to make it into one of its own progeny. Only once they're down in the depths of the Mind Flayer tunnels in this Brain Stealer's lair, do they realize how grave the situation actually is. And ultimately, this paladin is revealed to be the Golden Dragon parent of this Wormling, and transforms and becomes their greatest asset in an epic fight against another ancient dragon. At the end of the day, not only is this creature a Brain Stealer, but it's also a Heart Stealer, because I cannot wait to unleash this abomination on my next group of Guinea players. If you have ever been unfortunate enough to encounter one of these creatures in your many adventures, definitely leave a comment about that below. Or if you have a plan for how you might want to use this on a group of players, definitely tell me about that as well. And of course, as I mentioned before, the stat block for all the different versions of this creature can be found in the description below. And if you are one of my lovely patrons, you will find the Monster Manual style Photoshop stat block I've made on the Patreon page. If you're not a patron, definitely consider checking that out. It's three bucks a month and you get at least four fancy schmancy stat blocks. And down there you'll find Twitter, Facebook, and all the other different ways to get a hold of me if you have any recommendations for monsters you'd like to see in the future. In any case, thank you guys so much for watching. I do really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next episode. Till then.